Um, okay, I'll just sit, I think. Oh, nah. Standing is better, huh? Um, right, I'm going to make it as quick as I can because there's a lot of different talks and I think it's about 20 slides. Um, there's a chance I might go off rambling about one particular piece of software that's featured in this story. Um, just yell at me if I do that. Um, a bit more than a year ago, I was introduced uh, by SEP, by the way, thanks a lot, um, to this startup, uh, in a local startup in Singapore. Um, does e-commerce, is based on Magento. Um, did the development of its Magento uh, website, mainly uh, offshore, different companies. Um, the last one was somewhere in the Ukraine or somewhere in Eastern Europe. Um, and they needed a mobile web front end because they only had a, a desktop optimized uh, site. So I don't know who here knows Magento. Has anybody ever worked with Magento? Um, it's really bad. Like, <laughs> it's, just, it's just really, really bad. Um, it was built somewhere mid last decade, uh, about 10 years ago, uh, based on the Send frame Framework 1. It's, it was kind of the period where PHP was sort of getting modern, but it wasn't quite there, there yet. Um, the data model, because of uh, for extendability reasons, is based on uh, the EAV pattern or anti-pattern. Um, the templating system is really, really bad, um, super complicated. You define layouts in XML files, and then you have templates. But these templates, are, like you have template blocks, but these also have a, a block class behind them that has some code in it. And uh, it's just, I, I, I didn't even try to understand it, even a couple of years ago when I, when I had to do a Magento project. Um, it also uses prototype JS, um, for those who know it know that. That was around um, at the same time roughly when jQuery came up and um, it was sort of similar but not quite as nice as jQuery. So jQuery won. Uh, so Magento bet on prototype and uh, yeah basically it's tactical debt. If you, it's, a lot of people say you can very easily build a, a nice little shop in Magento very quickly if you don't have like in-house stuff you farm it off to Eastern Europe or something. Uh, but in the end, you'll, you'll spend more time just being annoyed at it and raging at your computer and stuff. <laughs> so <laughs> there's like three different ways, I think, three obvious ways to, to uh, react to this. One is you just get out. You're like, I'm not doing it. <laughs> um, I'd rather do something nicer instead. Uh, number two is you just say, I do it, but we just destroy everything you built. And then we just start from scratch. We do something else. Uh, something that's not Magento. That's probably very hard to sell um, and also doesn't make a lot of sense. And number three, of course, is you, you accept the fact that you have to work with Magento. Um, so I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to do any of it. So I was looking for another solution and I was thinking maybe, maybe there's, there's a way to just do my thing on the front end, JavaScript only, uh, have an API, interact with Magento. Uh, Magento actually has APIs uh, built in. Um, it has something, that, it has a SOAP API, which you can't really use from a, from a browser. It has a, something like a REST API, but it's, it's both um, mainly for backend type stuff to integrate with whatever systems you want to integrate your Magento with. It's not for front end stuff. Um, one guy in Germany actually um, extended that API and, and built something, built an Angular frontend uh, for it, and uh, he gave a talk about it. It's on YouTube. Um, I didn't want to do that. It didn't look nice. You still have to do Magento development in the end. And then there was this other project on GitHub called Magento on Angular. It's a guy in Britain, I think. He uh, basically started a, a Laravel project um, it uses a Magento Go class. It's, it's one class from Magento. You basically get this class into your project, and then you can use it to get uh, from that uh, access all the data, all the other, like get instances from, from classes and things like that. Uh, it implemented some aspects of what you need in a, uh, in a web shop. Um, not everything, but it was MIT licensed, um, or at least like the only, the only place in the whole project that has any reference to license, as far as I can tell, is the Bauer file. And it's at MIT license there, so I just made a fork, a private fork. 
And I implemented all that stuff, um, like the stuff we needed, the checkout, uh, the search, and some other small stuff that's very specific to that one company. And on the, on the client side, I used Angular, which actually worked out quite well. Um, we, so there now is a mobile front end that's mobile optimized. It's relatively quick. Um, data, everything is still in Magento. All the transactions are handled by Magento. Um, but I don't really have to touch it much, especially not for front end related stuff. Um, and especially not the uh, templating part. So I was, I was basically doing that only half of my time. I did some other stuff as well. I was not a full time employee. Uh, and this was one uh, project. So um, I did that, and after that, they were like, okay, now we need a, a mobile app for people who want to sell stuff. The, the Sartribute is a marketplace, so you also depend on people submitting their products. Um, and for that, basically, I just extended Magento on, on Angular again, um, that little server-side API for, that stuff we, for the stuff we needed for the app. Um, we got the app development done uh, by an external person as well, and uh, that worked out as well. It's now a sort of functional app. It's not very pretty yet, but it does its job. Now, um, meanwhile, the main website was still maintained by the, uh, by the offshore team. Uh, our digital marketing guy at Style Tribute was basically assigning them tasks and ask, uh, asked them to change stuff. It was not, uh, it, it's still not a very good uh, front end, if you ask me. If you look at it, it's not perfect, but it's a startup. And in startups, especially pre-series A startups, I guess sometimes you cut corners. You want to build something that works. You want to have basically an MVP, even if it's a bit ugly. Um, so it's fine. But the end goal for me always was to have uh, one nice polished front end based on uh, the work I did for the mobile. Um, completely responsive, of course. So now every time, so over time, when I was doing all that other stuff, I took over the, um, all the, the CTO style responsibilities in that uh, company. And now all the work, all the change requests and everything go through me. And whenever I have to implement something um, um, big, a big feature, I just throw out that part of, of the uh, Magento based front end and I reuse my Angular components. And uh, I'm, I'm still, it's still nothing like it. I'm working on something, basically a complete revamp of the product detail page with some additional functionality that will hopefully go live within the next couple of days. Um, and I started doing like server-side stuff whenever possible in, uh, in Node as microservices. I started doing that now for transactional emails. I have a little service for that. Um, the idea, of course, in the end is to um, use only the API to interact with Magento um, uh, from the front end, from all the customer facing stuff. And a couple of weeks ago, I realized when you, when you do that, once, once you have that, and basically what you have with an API is, a, is an informal specification of all the stuff you need to do, uh, of all the stuff the backend needs to do to serve the clients. And uh, that also means at some point you can easily just switch out the whole API and you don't have to redo anything on the front end. So that's basically, finally I get my sledgehammer, finally I can sort of kick Magento out and there will not be a big disruption. There's not like we need to redo everything, we put everything on hold. Um, we can do it face, like in, in phases, we can, um, we do it on the front end first and I guess the switch of the main, say, transaction engine, that will be a bigger switch, but still, um, we can still at the same time uh, work on the front end uh, improve it there and, and the improvements are not lost. Um, so now it's about actually building something serious rather than something that works, some MVP, MVP type product to attract investors. Now we need to build an actual um, uh, proper platform to run this uh, the startup. And uh, I'm, I'm not quite sure yet what I want to what I want to build it on. Um, I'm relatively sure I want, to, I want to use JavaScript for everything, server and client. Um, I haven't really figured out yet which frameworks or um, libraries are going to be around in five years. Um, they are talking about Express or Meteor or something. Um, so that's still open. Uh, I'm still 
kind of, I'm, I'm trying to work around that by just doing minimal um, encapsulated stuff, reusable stuff. Um, oh yeah, right. Um, one reason, <laughs> one reason I'm, I'm talking about this today is because I could convince, internally I could convince the CEO to um, start building a tech team. Now is the time to build a team uh, to build this stuff. So yeah, if you want to do something like that, like build it from the ground up, um, no longer in startup mode, but like actually build something that lasts, um, architect it properly, maybe no EAV data patterns and things like that. Um, yeah, talk to me. All right. And this will be your coworker, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> It's a nice thing. All right. Um, any questions? Yeah, awesome. <laughs> yes. Thanks. Actually, I, I do have a real question. Though. Um, do you think this is like something you can generally abstract? Because there's thousands of companies stuck on Magento because yeah. they can't afford to further develop on it, and this the solution is so elegant. You know, it can, can this become a general? I, I, I wouldn't call it elegant, but so, so in the meantime, so I, I my my private fork of Magento on Angular that's like very specific for for that thing that has references to like shoe size and things like that. It's just really <laughs> hacked together. Um, but in the, the, so that, that fork happened a bit more than a year ago. So in the meantime, they started doing more stuff. It got a bit more attention, more developers. So that project is still around. Um, yeah, I think it's, it's, yeah, it, it's probably, I, I think it's a good way to migrate away slowly if you can't afford to just rebuild everything from the beginning. Um, but I'm not, sure, I'm not sure how the project actually, actually is doing. I see there's some activity on GitHub, but I haven't really looked into it in a while. Yeah.